So the question is not, can a woman pastor a church? There are women just as intelligent and way more intelligent than a whole lot of men that are currently pastoring churches. The question is not, can a woman? She's not less than. No, it's not that at all. There needs to be some organization. It's like a, 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 a unit of military going to battle. There needs to be some organization. But when you get out on the battlefield, there need to be chiefs and there need to be followers and there need to be sergeants and lieutenants in between to get the word going and keep people in track. Some that are closer to the action, others that are back calling the shots. It needs to have all of that for it to work for us to prevail. If everybody just does what they want and how they're, well, the way I see it is I should be the captain and you should be the sergeant. And I, the way I feel is none of that matters when the bullets and bombs are flying. You're accountable in your position for what you do. Do it and do it well. And when the battle is done and we won, you all won. Everybody did their part. Everybody kept up with the accountability of their position. And when God blesses, he blesses us all. If you hear the word in your English translations, if you see the word overseer or elder, sometimes presbyter or bishop, and then there's another word leader, leaders, like obey your leaders in the Lord, Hebrews chapter 16, I think. Shepherd, pastor, some English translations say pastor, but that's not an English word, that's a Latin word. Shepherd is an English word from the Greek, and it means things. The shepherd of a pasture of, of sheep. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am the great shepherd. A good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep, right? Well, the Latin word for shepherd is pastor. Past, that's where we get the word pastoral or even pasture. So shepherd, pastor, leaders, elders, bishops. Okay, they're all relatively synonymous. For example, the word overseer, elder, comes from the word where we get the word Presbyterian from, presbyter. The word bishop comes from a word where we get the word Episcopalian from, or Episcopal. But they're all used synonymously throughout the New Testament. And, and, the, and the top scholars, they, they all agree that that's exactly correct. Now that's important. Because what these words mean, shepherd, pastor, overseer, bishop, presbyter, elder, they all mean the leaders of the church congregation. That's the context. Especially the pastors and those they call to be alongside of them, associate pastors, etc. And every one of these words in every scripture in the entire New Testament are in the male form. There's not a single example of a woman pastor, and there's not a single example of requirements for a pastor. For a woman, it's all in the male form. Just let it say what it says. But here's what I tell people. Do you want to be blessed? Then do it the way God says is best. Can it be done a different way? It can if it's done correctly and for the right reason, and God can bless that. But the way he says is best in a marriage or in a church has nothing to do with women being less than or men being greater than. Nothing to do with that. It goes back to my illustration I used on Mother's Day. I won't do the whole thing again. But basically, if your house is burning down, who are you going to call first? The mayor? The county commissioners? A police officer? An ambulance? No, you're going to call the fire truck with lots of water and firefighters that are trained to get that house saved. Am I right? If you got a gang out in your front yard, get ready to bust the door down, come in and kill you and all your family, you gonna call the fire department? I mean, they could be helpful, but that's not who you want men with guns and sirens and blue lights and people could be heard from way distance coming in and you want them to have shotguns and assault rifles and you want the SWAT team there. And I mean, if you're dying of a heart attack, who do you want? The fire? You want a cop to come? Well, he could help, but I mean, I want paramedics that can communicate with surgeons and doctors back at the hospital, life flight if necessary. So it's not who's more important. It depends upon the accountability for the situation we're in. They're all important. I can't imagine a culture without firefighters or without medical people or without police and cops. I can't imagine. Can a woman pastor a church? The answer to that is yes, but that's not the question. The question is, should a woman pastor a church? 
and take the responsibility of being accountable for the direction of the whole church body. According to God's word, he has assigned men with that accountability. But as long as you set me apart to be the pastor leader, I'm going to do my best fervently to do the best that God explains clearly to us. And we're going to do it his way. And if I discover that I haven't been doing it his way, biblically, contextually, not how people feel and ought to feel and how it ought to be, then that's the way we will do it and I will correct it. But look at Ephesians very quickly. I'm going to read it through. We all are familiar with it and I'm going to close. Wives, submit to your husbands to the Lord, for the husband is the is as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. That means in the same way that we submit to Jesus with our lives. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church for we are members of his body for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh this whole thing I'm talking about Paul saying is a profound mystery but I'm talking about Christ and the church he's talking about marriage but he's also talking about Christ and the church and you know what he's saying I hold the men accountable women you're accountable as well you're right there beside your men he says, I have an order. It's the best in a fallen world. And everybody, if they will do what they're supposed to do in the best way, we will win this battle. But if everybody's fighting against each other and one's trying to usurp the other and lord it over the other in ways that are way outside of their boundaries, we will lose. If you want to be blessed in anything, then do it the way God says is best. It's as simple as that. Do you want to be blessed? Then do it the way God says is best.